Hello YouTube, it's Dust Gregor for another exciting Linux distribution video first impressions. Today we'll be looking at Antix, or is it anti X for anti Xorg? Although it is using Xorg, it is using very small GUI interfaces such as ISWM and Fluxbox. For reasons that I leave to you, I'll be calling it Antix from now on instead of Anti X. Uh, that's how I've heard it kind of pronounced in some of the videos that I watched when I was just kind of getting an overview of it. Antix comes from Greece. It's very lightweight. We go over here to the web page. You can see that it's a fast, lightweight, and easy to install live CD distribution based on Debian testing. However, when you do install it, you are given the choice as to whether or not you want to go with stable or testing or whatever's out there. Now, one of the biggest impressive things that I had with Antix is that in less than nine minutes I was able to boot up from the USB stick, set everything up, install it onto a partition, configure my grub so it would boot, reboot, and get into the operating system. In fact, up to the point of just getting ready to reboot took no more than about seven and a half minutes. Now that's not looking at anything else, it's pretty much just booting, starting the install, answering the simple questions, editing Grub, and then telling it to reboot. All of that in less than 10 minutes for everything. That is really impressive. But that's not all. Everything that I've found about Antix has been that it's very stable, has been working very well, and has been much more impressive than last week's distribution, which I ran into many different bugs. And I'll talk about a little bit of that in a little, a little later. For right now, I'm just going to give you a brief overview of the desktop here and we won't do too much, we're just going to minimize this for now and minimize that for now, you don't have to look at me. The desktop comes with uh, this nice interface here that talks about how long you've been up and running you know, with time and date, CPU, RAM, etc, etc. It's kind of a neat feature there that's simple to get used, simple to get running in other Linux distributions. A few icons here to get you started. Now one of the things that kind of, I kind of ran into a snag when I first got this set up was I wasn't quite sure where to go from there and so looking around I did find the control panel section right here which will bring up right here is where you can choose your wallpaper edit settings and also the big thing go into network and set up your wireless configuration so that everything can work and you can go ahead and start getting updates from the internet I was very easily able to install simple screen recorder as you can see that's running right now and of course as you saw GUVC works right now for at least showing you pictures however I have been having some problems with GUVC lately in the capturing department just using it to capture but I'm having the same problem in Gen 2 with a recent re-image as well so I'm not sure if I can blame GUVC or maybe some other type of dependency package causing issues all over the place with some of these new things. If we go on and look at the simple menu. Um, since this is IceWM that I'm running right now, uh, very simple, but you don't always have to just go over here to the start button. You can right click anywhere and have this and you can get into anything that you're looking for. Now I've installed a lot of stuff on here so the, the items that you see are not the ones particularly that might have come with it. For instance, I threw on this a couple games to try out and a lot of different other applications just to just to really put it through its test. Lightweight doesn't mean that the OS has to be simplistic and unable to do hardcore stuff. It just means that you don't have a heavy overburdened GUI interface that's just trampling your resources to the point where things just don't work right. This is a real good distribution that probably would work 
on older technology with very little problems because the RAM usage and needs, the system disk space needs are very light. But at the same time, this is a very good starting point for if you just want to throw on an OS in less than 10 minutes and be able to then install the newest GNOME or KDE or anything else and just go with it. I want to tell you, because I had so much so many problems within the last flavor that I looked at with GNOME 3, I wanted to see what antics would do with GNOME 3. And I'm going to be pausing this video in just a little bit and we're going to go into into the GNOME 3 side of the house because I want to show you just how much better it is over there because things just work so much more smoothly. But everything here is easy, simple. The install was very convenient and not a problem at all. So with further ado, I'm going to pause and you'll see me back here in about a fraction of a second and we'll be in hopefully GNOME 3. Thanks. So here we are in GNOME 3. As you can see, a very clean, crisp desktop. This is kind of the, what you see when you first start up which is very minimal. Now if you remember right, when I talked last week, one of the biggest problems I had was was the something so simple like the time and date. Now if we go in here and you can see that I now have the proper time date shows that I'm in America within the Phoenix region and if I unlock it, put in my credentials, you know, we can change that to anywhere and it's going to remember it, it's going to keep it, and it's going to keep on going. And I was afraid maybe I was doing something wrong the last time with this, that there was something else I should have been doing. But no, as soon as I put this like, like it should be, and I locked it back up and closed it, it was still there again. Now one nice feature and difference here, I'm just going to go ahead and minimize myself too for now. I can show you this whole desktop here. Now this was pretty much all the same what you saw but this is what's different when I went into the other one you know we had options down below for just you know most recent and applications and if we look at this here it's in a different spot but immediately it comes up but the big thing is before it just kind of felt like a huge Android app drawer that I had to search through everything kind of like right now because it was kind of defaulted on all but none of these menus over here was available now all of a sudden with uh, using antics and installing GNOME 3 straight from the meta directories for a stable uh, Debian and all that we have this beautiful menu system that lets us see everything in a nice graphic interface and we can look at everything just in a short spot Hopefully I'm not going too fast. You can always pause the screen. Yeah. Or you can go back here to all and and then just kind of go up and down through the whole thing. You know, that's just a nice feature. They had the, the search before in the other flavor, but this one is over on this side, and it works just as well. If we were looking for GUVC, for instance, it'd pop up. And the other thing was I was always looking for you know, the, wh how do I install applications here? Well, it's very simple with, with the fact that if I get rid of that there and start typing in Synaptics, I get the Synaptic Package Manager. But I also went to look too, if I get rid of that there, and I've got it in Applications and all, there's no Add Remove Programs that was on the other one so that must have been something unique to that and and since I'm not too familiar with GNOME 3 I've never really gotten into it that much I didn't know if that was something unique or or not but as you can see everything here is nice everything works well if we were to open up say the GIMP you know, brings it up nice clean crisp as that goes through my point with showing you this is that this particular flavor has so much to offer and everything is so stable. I've been using it for about a week now and 
everything's been great. I've really enjoyed it. In fact, I've liked Antic so much, I was thinking about making it my second partition on my computer as I normally have Gen 2 as my master partition, and then my second partition is normally something that's stable, that works, that's my always my go-to. So that if I'm running into problems or testing something, say, in Gen 2, or I just need to just go to it. And the other thing is, shoot, if I can reinstall this thing, if I blow it up, destroy it all, I can reinstall the whole thing in less than 10 minutes. Now, you say, well, you said 7 minutes earlier, and you said 9 minutes, too. Now, my exact numbers were, it took me to boot up the system and install the system 7 minutes and 24 seconds. And then once I had finished installing it, and then setting up Grub, configuring everything, and then rebooting and allowing it to reboot and log in, took another nine minutes, I think, and I believe nine minutes, here are my notes, nine minutes, 39 seconds. So that's why I'm just kind of rounding and saying, you know, in less than 10 minutes, just cross the board, you can have a really good operating system. I'm probably the first time through might take you 15, 20. But hey, that's an awesome time frame to be thinking about how little it took to to be able to do that. Now, I really just can't get used to, to GNOME that much. So this is a little difficult for me to bounce back and forth. But, you know, that is what it is. But my point is, this is really cool. This works well. This is stable. This is clean. This is one of mine. This is one of those that I would say five stars. You know, five out of five stars. You know, <laughs> the best rating I could give it, I would give Antics because it's super easy, lightweight, so it'll work on your older technology, but it'll still it's still strong enough that it it can work great on a Core i7 processor, which is what it's on now. It's been fun to play with. A wonderful OS, easy to install stuff. Like right here, you can see I have Chromium already on there. We'll pop it up real quick. The other nice thing is everything seemed to work really well out of the box. If we were to go to YouTube for instance throw on a video real quick Let's whatever pops up first here see if that comes up. That ought to as long as my network's running and working around. Well. The 80s. About there you go. For the first time. Darian so, Foster so, and Marshall there we go. You know, so far, very impressive, very likable, very easy to use. I can't say anything bad about this one. This one has been very refreshing to be able to use and not be so frustrated with other things. So, I will go ahead, splice everything together, send it out to you, and I hope you like this video. Antics. If it's morning, noon, evening, or night, I always switch those around sometimes. Whatever you're having, I hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much for your comments. Thank you very much for your views. I appreciate them. Um, according to my list of, of distros, the next one I'll be looking at will probably be OpenSUSE. Now, I know it's a mainstream one, and I used to use OpenSUSE for many years, but someone requested that I take a look at the latest version and just give my impressions of it. So that's what we'll be doing next. Until um, next Friday, I hope you all have a great week. Thanks again. We'll talk to you all later. Bye.